In this tutorial I will show you how to incorporate a rope into a crochet pattern, how to make puffy crochets without big slots in between. I'll explain what to do if the back details do not turn as smooth and flat as desired, and also how to finish the row discreetly when crocheting in spiral order. I'll explain what you should do to attach the rope and prevent it from popping out of the crochets, as well as what to do if something goes wrong on the side part. Spoiler alert, this is exactly what happened to my work when crochet started to shift. To make this bag, you'll need about 10 meters of rope, a skin of raffia, mine is from Ispie, color is called wood. I'll also need a hook, I use a 3.5 mm hook. For shoulder straps, I use a leather belt, but alternatively, you can make one yourself. If you decide to make a shoulder strap yourself, I'll post a video to my channel soon, in which I explain how to crochet a simple shoulder strap that doesn't stretch. Please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss this tutorial. We'll also attach leather D-rings and a leather-based magnetic clasp. We'll gradually incorporate the rope to the raffia crochets, that's why we need to prepare it. For that, untwine the rope slightly in the beginning. Cut one centimeter off one of the threads, then cut two or three centimeters off the second thread and leave the third thread as it is. Intertwine the rope and take the raffia. We are ready to make the base. We'll start by making a sliding loop and then crochet the first row with the raffia only. No rope yet. Make a standard sliding loop. If you haven't done it yet, it's very easy. Put the raffia tail on your palm, wrap it around your palm so that the working thread goes upward and the tail is downward. Then slip the tail under the right thread, use your hand to stabilize it, hook up the left thread, do not stretch it out too much, and form this loop on the hook. Crochet it as a chain stitch, like that. Then simply insert the hook inside the circle under both threads and pull out the working thread. There are two loops on the hook now. Crochet them together. Repeat these steps eight times. So make eight single crochets. In order to count your single crochets, you need to count the braids that form on top. And while I'm making my single crochets, you may tap the bell icon and subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified on my new free tutorials. Let's count horizontal stitches. This is the chain stitch that we've made at the beginning. It is slightly vertical in relation to other stitches. You don't need to count it. Count only those stitches that are visible on the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 stitches are done. There is one left. Insert the hook into the circle one more time, pull raffia out and crochet two loops together. All in all, I've made eight single crochets. Now pull the tail and draw the circle tight. The string of single crochets shall turn into a ring. Then continue crocheting right from where we stopped. We're going to crochet in spiral order, we won't do the joining, and we'll use a rope and it's easier to knit in spiral rounds, because this way it won't, we won't have to cut it and weave all the tails all the time. So let's start with the second row right away, no joining is required. Skip the chain stitch, this vertical one that we've made in the beginning. Insert the hook into the first horizontal stitch under both loops. Pull the working thread out again 
and crochet two loops together. The first stitch of the second row is ready. In the second row we are going to insert the hook into each stitch twice. So insert the hook into one stitch twice, pull raffia out and crochet two loops together. Continue this way until the end of the second row. Starting from the second stitch, we are incorporating the rope into the work. We've prepared it in advance, now simply place it on the row. Help with your hand so that it doesn't fall off. Later on it will hold up itself without problems. So insert the hook into the second stitch, draw the thread out. Look, there are two loops on the hook in front of the rope. You need to crochet them together. Then insert the hook into the same stitch once again, draw the working thread. The rope is still behind the loops and in front of the working thread. Crochet two loops on the hook together. Carefully bend the rope along the crochet work, rounding it up. Insert the hook into the next stitch, make a single crochet. Insert the hook again into the same stitch, pull the working thread out, crochet two loops together. Continue crocheting the second row around the rope. The rope will gradually get hidden in between the crochets. You simply need to pull the working thread out more as you go further. For example, I'm inserting the hook into the stitch, pulling out the working thread so that it wraps around the rope. The length should be enough. Insert the hook once again and pull the thread out. Crochet two loops together. This is the last stitch of the second row. Let's double it as well as all other stitches. I'm making two single crochets out of it. And right away we're starting the third row. Here we'll alternate doubled and single stitches. It means you should make two single crochets in one stitch, then one single crochet into the other, then two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet and so on. I suggest the first stitch of the single row should be single, which means this stitch will have one single crochet in it. And let's mark it with a stitch marker, because starting from the third row it's rather difficult to find the end at the beginning of the row. Stitch marker is a good idea, especially if you're a beginner. So mark the stitch. According to the pattern, the next stitch of the third row should be doubled. Make a single crochet and then insert the hook into the same stitch again and make another single crochet. Then the next stitch is single. After that, double stitch. The next one is single again. I hope you've got the idea. Finish the row following this pattern until you reach the marker. I'm reaching the stitch marker. It is the first stitch of the third row that we marked, which means we are starting the fourth row with the next stitch. Here we're going to alternate two single stitches with one doubled. We're still doing the alternation but the number of single stitches has increased. First two stitches of the fourth row are single, which means I am inserting the hook into each stitch just once. Let's mark the first stitch of the row as well. Do not forget it. This one. Be careful because raffia tends to tear up. I've already made two single stitches. That's why the next one should be doubled. Insert the hook into the same stitch twice. 
make two single crochets. After that, come two single stitches and then doubled. I want to share a useful tip on how to get these stitches on top as tight as possible and how to avoid having too large holes. So to achieve that, make sure the loop left on the hook is always tight. So stretch out the working thread on your index finger to tighten it up. When you hook up the working thread, the second loop that you form doesn't have to be that tight. It should loosely wrap around the rope. You crochet two loops together and then tighten the thread on the hook. If you follow this principle, your top stitches will be equally tightened. At the same time, single crochets that wrap around the rope will be loose enough. Also try to unfold your raffia so that it doesn't turn into a thin thread. When it's straightened up, it covers the rope better. I tried to match the color of the raffia to the rope, but the rope behind is still visible. Try to cover it as thoroughly as you can. And keep raffia unfolded. This is double stitch. It is followed by two singles. I've reached the marker again, which means in the next stitch we're starting the fifth row. In the fifth row we're alternating three single stitches with one doubled. We'll start with singles. Three single stitches. Let's mark the first one with the stitch marker. Then making the second single stitch and the third one. Three single stitches are ready, which means that you need to make a doubled one next. Doubled is ready. Now make three single stitches based on this principle and keep on crocheting by this principle. Three single, one doubled, three single again and so on. All further rows will be crocheted according to the same principle. The only difference is that in each new row an additional single stitch will be added in between double stitches. In the sixth row we'll make four single and one doubled, seventh row five single and one doubled and so on. All in all you should make eight rows. I've finished my eight rows. Do not forget that we start crocheting from this one without rope in it. I've steamed off my circle because by the end of the eighth row it becomes a bit wavy. You need to steam it off or even leave under something heavy overnight to get its shape back. You can either do it once you finish the main part of the back or during the process in order to get the right shape. Next, we need to crochet a handle. We'll skip several stitches and crochet around the rope with single crochets and then attach the handle to the main work and keep crocheting the ninth row. I'm leaving the stitch marker where it is because now we're starting to crochet around the rope. I suggest making 40 single crochets, but you might wish to make a longer handle. This, in this case you'll need to make more single crochets, so it's totally up to you. To start crocheting around the rope, slip the hook below the rope, hook up the working thread, pull it out and crochet two loops together. Make your crochets as tight as possible. Use your hand to move stitches closer to each other. It should cover the rope entirely. Total number of stitches may vary in this case because it depends on raffia and the design of the handle. The bag's overall appearance depends on how carefully and neatly you're crocheting. So don't hurry, try to be as neat as possible. My handle is 17 centimeters long. All in all, we've made 40 single crochets. Then we need to skip some stitches. 
I estimated that it would be optimal to skip 16 stitches. But you may do it differently. Perhaps you might skip less number of stitches to make a longer handle or on the contrary more stitches. It's totally up to you. So I'm skipping 16 stitches. Here, here I need to insert the hook. I make 40 single crochets for my handle. And let's insert the hook into the identified stitch. Pull the working thread out and keep crocheting as usual. Here is my handle. Now we need to remember how many single stitches do we need to skip between the doubled ones. In the previous row I alternated 6 single stitches with 1 doubled. It means in the 9th row we are going to alternate 7 single stitches with 1 doubled. Let's start with single stitch stitches. I've already made 1. There are 6 left. Afterwards, make a double stitch, and then seven single again. Go on like that until you reach the marker. Now we need to make a second layer of single crochets around the rope and finish the first part of the bag. This part of the rope we are crocheting without increases. I'm making a double stitch on top of the double stitch of the previous row and then making single stitches. I'm inserting the hook into each stitch just once. Do not forget to draw the loops out enough. They should be long enough and pull up the working thread once you crochet two loops together. I'm done with the second row of the bag. second row of the handle and now we need to finalize this part. Here right after the handle comes a double stitch. We've made it in the previous row after we join the handle to the main piece. We've made two single crochets out of one stitch and in this row I'm also doubling this stitch. It will be symmetrical to what we did before the handle here. We double stitch this stitch as well. And the handle is ready and we can cut the rope. As usual, split it into three parts. Make one thread very short, the second cut in half, and the third one will be the longest. Now twist the rope back as it was and keep crocheting around it. No more increases here, no more double stitches, simply make single crochets to cover it up. We should wrap it up and join this row with the rest of the work. Cut about 15 centimeters of raffia, pull this tail out and Insert the hook into the next stitch. Insert it back to front. Draw the tail to the back side. Turn the work towards you a bit and slip the hook under the strap and a back loop of this stitch. Let me show you to make it clearer. There is this braid on top of the row. We've inserted the hook in the center of this braid and behind it there is a strap. We need to slip the hook under this strap and then under back loop of this braid. The hook should go right through the center. Then hook up, hook up the tail and draw it to the back. After that you may hide the tail in between the back stitches. In fact all of the tails should be weaved in. The one that comes from the center as well. So cut it and weave in between the stitches on the back. Another challenge we are up to is we have to make the second exact same part of the back. Try to make them as identical as possible. The number of crochets around this circ circumference should coincide. In this case we'll be able to join both parts and the back will be symmetrical. Steam off both parts of the back 
I iron it about 200 degrees and everything's fine, but you can start with a lower temperature depending on your type of raffia. So it's up to you. And now we can move on to the side piece. Before we do that, we need to estimate how many centimeters it should be and how many stitches we should make. It should look symmetrical once we attach the round parts. In order to calculate the right amount of stitches, I marked those places where we'll start attaching the side piece. These are single stitches right before the doubled ones. On both sides of the handle before the doubled stitches. I've inserted my stitch markers. There are 61 braids in between them. It's 38 centimeters. If you measure the side part with a measuring tape, it should be at least 38 centimeters. It might even slightly peek out on the sides because it will have rounded edges. So overall it can be even longer than 38 centimeters. We've calculated the right length, so let's get to work. This is how the side piece will look like. I need to fold it for it to fit into the frame. It is also crocheted with raffia, there are ropes inside, and that's why it keeps its shape very well. Its inner length is 38 centimeters that we measured. To crochet this part I made 65 chain stitches. Tighten the first stitch in a knot and then make 65 stitches. Make them neither too tight nor too loose. It's important to mark the length of the side part with stitch markers. Estimate the desired length and count the number of stitches. You might have made some mistakes while crocheting the round parts. So measure its length and based on that estimate the number of stitches. Also rely on your own measurements. Only because you might pick a hook of a different size or have a different stitch density. So you should measure it yourself. The length of your side piece should equal the length between the markers. So measure it yourself, do not rely on my measurements. I've made 65 chain stitches. By the way, at this point it doesn't equal 38 centimeters, but you don't have to worry about it yet. It should be 38 centimeters together with the rope. Make a turning chain and start incorporating the rope. Place it like that. It should stick out for about 3 to 4 centimeters. Even 5 centimeters, centimeters will be alright. We need this tail uh, in order to curl it to the opposite side. It should be long enough not to fall out of crochets. Once you've placed the rope, you need to turn the chain around. This is the front side, but you need to turn it to the back side. So this is how it looks. Each stitch consists of three straps and you need to find the middle strap and slip the hook below it. Let me show you on the example. So skip the turning chain and here is the first braid. There are top and bottom straps and here is the middle one and you need to slip the hook below it from bottom to top. And you should do that with every stitch of the row. So take the rope, skip the turning chain, insert the hook into the middle strap, 
hook up raffia and draw it out. It should wrap the rope tightly. Crochet two loops together. And then find a middle strap again, hook up raffia and crochet two loops together. Repeat these steps until the end of the chain. Crochets should wrap the rope tightly. When you draw raffia out and crochet two loops together, keep an eye on the working thread. It should be tight, so as the loop on the hook. In this case, your single crochets will sit tightly around the rope and you won't have big holes. Do not hurry making this first row, which is very important, and try to make it neat and tight. So take all the time you need. This is how it should look like, and of course, do not forget that you should insert the hook on the back side of the chain stitch into the middle strap. I'll explain a bit later why we're doing so. Why this is important. There are two stitches left. I haven't crocheted them because I'm going to crochet them differently. See how the strip looks right now? It spirals up and you need to straighten it up. So rotate it around the rope, rotate crochets around the rope, align them properly. Don't let your crochets shift to the right, because we need this tail of 5 centimeters. We're going to use it. So use your hand to align the crochets, and you can move them to the left, but never to the right. So I've aligned my crochets, the strip doesn't curl anymore, and let's measure our strap. It should be about 37 centimeters because there are still two chain stitches left that we haven't crocheted yet. And measure raffia only. Do not measure the tail. Oh look, it's just 31 centimeters. Whereas we need 37 centimeters. That's why I'm now fixing the right part of the strip and shifting the crochets to the left. The thing is that you can make 60 chain stitches and they would take up this much of a space if they are very dense. And at the same time they could be distributed over a bigger area and it would be the same 60 stitches. So we are oriented by 65 stitches and 38 centimeters. Uh, that's why we are spreading these stitches along the rope and overall they should take up exactly 38 centimeters. So do that and then measure once again. Oh, exactly what I need, 37 centimeters, perfect. It means I've done a good job and my crochets are well spread. We can move on to the rounding part. You'll need to bend the rope and start to crochet around the other side. The rope is quite thick and you should try to avoid having a large hole here. Make two single crochets out of the stitch that is next to last, which means you need to insert the hook twice in it. It already starts to rotate the rope into the right direction. And then make three single crochets out of the last stitch. As usual, insert the hook into the middle strap on the back side of the chain stitch and make three single crochets. Then bend the rope with your hand and find 
the next to last stitch where we made two single crochets. You need to insert the hook two more times into this very stitch and make two more single crochets. But this time on the back. This is how it looks after we bend the rope. There is this raffia tail. You may put it on the rope and then gradually hide in between the crochets. In this case, you won't have to weave it in afterwards on the back side. Now simply make a single crochet out of each stitch and go on until the end of the chain of chain stitches. This is how we should look like. And I promise to explain why we turned the chain around, our chain of chain stitches. This trick helps us make minimal holes while crocheting around the chain stitches. They can be even smaller, but the rope here tends to unfold, so this force enlarges the holes. If we hadn't turned the chain around, these holes would have been much bigger and it would have looked much worse. Keep on crocheting till the end of the chain. At this point, we need to incorporate the tail that we left in the beginning. Divide the tail into three threads. Leave one as is and cut the other two completely. But be careful not to cut raffia as well. Then place the uncut thread on top of the row together with the rope and make the rest of the crochets. Keep the tail with your hand because it may fall out. And try to leave the protruding elements on the back if there are any. Here we should bend the rope around this part and move to the other side. We'll need increases here to make this piece look neat. Do not crochet two last stitches yet. Look, there are two last chain stitches. And this is a turning chain. It will also be useful. As well as the next two stitches. Make two single crochets out of the next to last stitch. Then make three single crochets out of the last chain stitch. Then three single crochets out of the turning chain. And then, again, three single crochets out of the next chain. This horizontal one. And for the sake of symmetry, make two single crochets out of the next chain stitch as well. So we managed to crochet the rounding. Let me remind you that we made two single crochets out of the next to last stitch, three single crochets out of the last, three single crochets out of the turning chain, then three single crochets, and finally two single crochets of this stitch. So keep on crocheting along the row until the next rounding. Here you should insert the hook into each stitch just once and on the rounding 
we are going to do increases. So I'm making two single crochets here. This turn is not so sharp, so less increases are needed. And three single crochets in the central stitch and two single crochets out of the following two stitches. So two single crochets, two, three, two and two. After that keep on crocheting as usual, insert the hook into each stitch once and go on until the next turning. This turning will be smoother, will have even less increases. So again, identify five central stitches, one in the middle and two on both sides. Make two single crochets out of the first stitch, then one single crochet out of the next stitch, two single crochets out of the middle stitch, then one single crochet, and two single crochets out of the last stitch of the rounding. After that, keep on making a single crochet per each stitch. In the end of this row, we'll need to hide the tail, and it is the last row. So let's prepare the rope, cut it off like that, it should reach the center of the rounding, like that. And then as usual, split it into three threads. Cut about three centimeters of one thread, 1.5 centimeters of the other, twist it back and keep on crocheting around it. Make sure all of the tips are on the back side, all of the protruding elements. They should not stick out on the front side. If some of the elements are too protruding on the back, you may cut them, but be careful not to cut the raffia as well. So the tail is almost hidden in between the crochets. The last crochet is without the rope inside. And let's make a slip stitch in the end. Cut the raffia, leave a tail of about 15 centimeters and draw it out. Now we need to smooth this increase out. It's almost invisible though, but still we can make it look even better. This is where we made a slip stitch, so insert the hook into the next stitch, back to front, under both loops, hook up the tail and draw it to the back side. Slip the hook under this strap and back loop. It should go through the center of the braid and draw the tail to the back side. And after that, you need to weave the tail in on the back. Also cut these elements that are sticking out. Iron the side piece that you've just made. It should be flat and not over twisted. Stim it off and it will become beautiful just like this one. As there are 61 stitches on the round part of the back, we need to allocate 61 stitches on the side piece as well. Let's mark the first and 61st stitch with stitch markers. This will guide you within the process. This looks quite symmetrical. Stitch markers are on both sides with exactly 61 stitches in between. So starting from this pink stitch marker, I'm going to attach the side piece to the main part of the bag. Let's take a new thread of raffia and remove the stitch markers. I'm leaving 15 centimeters tail. Let's hook up the raffia and insert the hook into these two stitches. Then insert the hook in 
to the next stitch so draw the working thread through them and through the loop on the hook as well by doing so we are making a slip stitch insert the hook into the next stitch under both loops poke through the main part as well pull the working thread through both stitches and through the loop on the hook as well make these slip stitches relatively tight but do not overdo if you make them too tight the seam will be crimped so try not to over tighten this loop on the hook join two stitches and then gently draw the thread through the loop on the hook do not make it too tight otherwise the seam will be constricted you may see that the brain is being created it's almost invisible very subtle keep on crocheting the parts of the back around the perimeter you need to reach the stitch markers on both sides the number of stitches on both parts should coincide my stitches matched perfectly so the calculation was correct i'm taking the last markers out and making the last slip stitch and now let's cut the tail i'm gonna leave about 15 centimeters then draw it to the back of your side piece and you'll need to weave it on the back do the same on the other side of the back after crocheting the side piece to my first circle it became clear that i have different stitch density I have equal number of stitches on both parts, but stitches on the side piece are much more dense and that's why the seam looks a bit constricted. If you have the same problem, here is a trick how you can improve the situation. We've intentionally made the side piece with several stitches in reserve. It's a, bit, it's a bit longer than we actually need and now we can use these extra stitches I have counted 65 stitches on the other side not 60 but 65 I added 4 additional stitches which I'm going to distribute evenly around the circle and thus enlarge the surface of the side piece every 13th stitch will crochet differently let's divide 65 by 5 we get 5 pieces per 13 stitches in each let's make the first 13 stitches in a standard way insert the hook into stitches on both side piece and then main part of the bag make slip stitches look how you can determine if something goes wrong and you seem become constricted you see the stitch on the side piece is now in front of the stitch of the main part that has already been crocheted you may notice the working thread coming off it if i now stretch this stitch the side piece will gradually become constricted and this is by the way just the beginning of the row so here is a trick how we can resolve this problem we can join two stitches of the side piece with one stitch of the circle so join two stitches on both sides with a slip stitch and then hook up the next stitch on the side piece and insert the hook into the same stitch on the main part once again and make a slip stitch so this way we've connected two stitches on this side with one stitch on the main part now make 13 stitches as usual connect one to one as you may notice the seam is totally fine now it doesn't look constricted and crochets are exactly in front of each other but as you approach the next 13th stitch you'll again notice the misalignment so i've 12 stitches as usual and i'm going to apply the same trick to the 13th stitch again we may notice a slight shift of stitches they are not in front of each other and we need to fix this 
I'm making a slip stitch and then inserting the hook into the next stitch on the side part and then into the same stitch of the main part that we have just crocheted. Having done that, make another 12 stitches as usual. So I'm past 12 more stitches and it's time to do our trick and connect two side stitches with one stitch of the main part. And then again 12 stitches. And let's repeat this trick one last time. All in all you should do it four times around the perimeter. And let's make the last 12 stitches. I'm inserting the hook into each stitch just once. I have attached the side piece to round parts of the back and here is my cool bag. It is 20 centimeters in diameter, 22 centimeters high. To give the bag a complete look, I'm going to attach my leather accessories, though even at this point it looks very pretty. It's very minimalistic and stylish. If you also want to make a handle. There is soon going to be a new tutorial on my channel in which I explain how to crochet this simple shoulder strap that doesn't stretch. Please subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss my new free tutorials. Please comment below which bag or any other accessories you want me to crochet. I'm looking forward to reading your comments.